In this video, I will talk about how to do survival analysis in R. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos on survival analysis, the theory and the example. I have opened up my R program here in R Studio and I have already executed parts of it. First, you need to install the package called Survival right here. So you can install it as a package or you can just remove the pound sign and run this code. Then the next thing to read is, uh, next thing to do is to read in the data called Survival Unemployment and attach the data. I'm going to go ahead and open up the data here and look at it. We have here um, a problem to consider on unemployment and we're trying to do survival analysis. The dependent variable is composed of two things. First of all is the spell. That's the number of periods that a person is unemployed. So the first person has been unemployed for five periods, the second one for 13, the third one for 21, and so on. The next variable is the event, and in this case, the event is finding a job. And so the first person has found a job after five periods, the second person has found a job after 13 periods, and so on. So this is the event variable. And notice that I have renamed this from, it used to be sensor one, but I renamed that as event because it's truly the event. Uh, so the zeros here are those that after nine period haven't found a job yet or haven't experienced the failure or the event. And these are truly the censored observations in the sample. We also will consider three independent variables. One of them is whether or not the person has unemployment insurance and that's a dummy variable, zero, one. Then we will consider the log wage for a person, that's a continuous variable, and we will also consider the age variable in the model, and this is this variable. Okay, so the first thing to do is define the variables. I will call the spell variable time, just renaming things. Um, then the event variable is the event, and I will use cbind for all the independent variables into an x variable and U, ui, the unemployment insurance dummy variable would be called group. So when you run this program, think about how your dependent variable is defined. Here you put the periods. Here make sure that you put the event or the failure, not the censored variable. Then you put together the independent variables and then the group is, is uh, best if it's like a categorical variable, not a continuous variable. The next thing we can do is summarize the time variable and you see we have from 1 to 28 periods. M mean is uh, 6.28 periods and median is 5. So that's how long it takes people to either find a job or leave the sample. And the event is a uh, zero one variable. The mean is 0.32, and that is uh, the percent. 32 percent of the people or the subjects have experienced the failure event, which is actually finding a job. It's a good thing. And here's the summary statistics for the um, independent variables. So the next thing to do is uh, start up with the. Um, Kaplan-Meier non-parametric analysis and look at the survival functions. We will do this with survival fit and here's survival. You put here the time variable and then the event variable and then a one. And we're going to summarize this survival and we will also plot it where on the x-axis we would have time and the y would be the survival probability. So I'm going to highlight this and run this code. And here is what we have the survival table. And we would have the time lined up from 1 to 27. And then here is the number at risk. This is all the subjects starting. 
in the first period, 294 had the event happen, which is found a job. This would be the survival rate of 0.91 and so on. So this is the number of subjects starting in the second period, which is this number minus the people that had the event minus the censored ones, which we lost, but it's not reported here. And so from those additional 178 exp uh, experienced the event. So the hazard rate would be 178 divided by 2000. 803 that would be the hazard rate and you can see how the survival rate and we went over the lecture notes how it's going down from 0.91 in the first period to 0.31 in the last period so here you can actually look at the um, you can actually look at the graph and we have again that uh, that's the survival function and it's going down over time. Notice that it's always starting at 1, then we have 0.91 in the second period and so on, and it's ending at point, um, point 0.31 approximately for the last period after 28 periods, and this is the point 0.31. Okay, so this is the um, survival probability. Next thing we can do the same analysis by group and notice that this lines of codes are exactly the same as before except for the group. Before we just had one a constant and now we're going to have by group. So we're going to have two different uh, uh, functions there. I'm going to run this code and we have the survival probabilities for group 0, those that don't have insurance and for group one and one thing that we're going to be plotting is this survival function over time so time is on the horizontal axis and survival is on the vertical axis and here we are comparing those survival probabilities so let's go ahead and look at the graph that we have here and I guess I didn't put the legend here but this trust me <laughs> this is uh, the line for those that have insurance and this is the one for those that don't have insurance so if you look at say the tenth period then we have those that have unemployment insurance they're in the sample uh, 75 percent of them survive they're still in the sample unemployed and those that that don't have unemployment insurance about 50 percent of them are in the sample so this is a bad thing because those that have insurance actually have l higher likelihood of survival which means they're still unemployed okay so next thing to do is the nelson allen non-parametric analysis and we're going to try to accumulate um uh, the hazard rates and then come up with again with the survival probabilities and we're using just a little bit different uh, codes here uh, but the analysis would be very similar okay if we look again at this graph we have uh, the survival function again is going down so it's just a different way in which this could be pyramid uh, you could um, you could specify this. I would though suggest to use the Kaplan Meyer because this is the most common one to um, that people are using. Okay, so for the rest, what we will do is we are going to emphasize the semi-parametric and the parametric survival analysis models. The first one is the Cox proportional hazard model, and that's how you specify it. You put here the survival uh, function. You put the time, the event. And here's where you can now include the independent variable. These are my x variables, and I use cbind for them up here. So you can put whatever variables you want up there. And then you can summarize the results. And when I run this, here would be the, um, the results that we see. Uh, notice that the first thing is the coefficients are reported, and second, we have the uh, hazard rates are reported here. So how would you interpret the coefficients? Um, individuals that would have higher uh, wages would have 
lower unemployment duration, meaning that they will terminate the unemployment faster. So if it's a little bit counterintuitive, but if the coefficient here is positive, they would have lower durations. And the Cox pro proportional hazard model is the only model that gives consistent sign estimates across all software that I'm teaching. So the way to interpret this coefficient is that those individuals that have unemployment insurance, they are likely to have higher unemployment duration, which means that they will terminate their unemployment insurance slower because it's a negative coefficient. So looking at the survival rates, uh, we would have uh, looking at the hazard rates, I'm sorry, we would have the opposite story. And here you could actually go ahead and interpret the magnitude of these. So the point 1.58, you interpret that by saying that the unit increase in the log wages is associated with just 58% increase in the hazard rates. And for individuals that uh, claim unemployment insurance, they would have, let's see, um, that would be this minus one, would have a, like, something like 63% lower hazard rates. So, in other words, we have that individuals that have higher wages, they're more likely to find a job because they have higher hazard rates and the higher hazard rates means it's more likely to have the event, which is finding a job. And those that have unemployment insurance, they're actually less likely uh, to, to find a job or to experience the event. And this result is consistent to what we had before with the graph that I showed you. Okay, so this was the semi-parametric model, and now we can do the three parametric models, the exponential, Weibull, and logistic. And notice that they're exactly the same how they're specified. We're using survival regression, and then the survival function time and the event, you put the x variables here. And the only thing that's different is just specifying the different distribution, and then summarizing the results. Now, one thing to notice in the three models here is that, in fact, we get results that have opposite coefficients of the model above. So look at those results that are similar in magnitude, but just opposite in, in, um, in sign. So this was 0.46, this is minus 0.48, and so on. So um, make sure that when you interpret those, you don't get them flipped and just say the opposite of what your results are. What would you say here is that if we have, again, if we have a positive coefficient, this means that we would have um, lower duration. Or in other terms, we would have the event happening faster. So that's the way to interpret those results. And the interpretation here is exactly the same as the one before, although the, the coefficients are opposite. Okay, so I think this is all I had on how to do survival analysis in R. Thanks for watching and come back again for more videos.